Crypto token utility is unfortunately not as important as you might think if you want to just solely focus on making money in crypto. A lot of people, the majority of people in crypto are here to simply make money. That's what most investments are for. But I want to talk about token utility and its purpose in making money versus, you know, negating risk, right? So what kind of portion of your portfolio and how should you Look at this from a risk reward perspective on tokens with utility and tokens not with utility if you're solely looking to make money. So the first thing, what is token utility? Token utility is what you get out of or what the token that you're investing in can be used for. So some examples are like governance, right? Um, where you get to vote on a decentralized protocol and change it depending on how much you know tokens you hold. You can get some perks from like holding a token. So maybe you get like a free airdrop. You get a free NFT, you get lower trading fees, you get more staking rewards, more staking APY, something like that, right? So you get some kind of reward. And then the third thing is like a revenue sharing. Um, some DEXs are trying to implement this where like people who hold, who hold the token are somehow, you know, like they're going to be rewarded with higher, like their token's going to be worth more because the protocol itself is going to do buybacks of their token and then like decrease the supply on the market. So your tokens will theoretically be worth more. Okay. So that's what token utility is. It's what is your token, like what is the purpose of you holding the token and what can the token be used for? Some examples of tokens with very high utility are like Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, ERG, these L1 protocols where the token has to be used in all transactions. These are very high utility tokens because they have to be used so far for the protocol to do transactions and to function and to work and to pay miners and to pay stakers, right? These utility tokens are coupled with like being around for quite a while, like Bitcoin's been around 12, 13 years. This has very high utility and, you know, very high use, very high probability that it will continue to have high utility and people will continue to use it in the future. Some alternatives to this tokens with low utility would be like Pepe, SNEC, right? Uh, kind of like Uniswap, MinSwap, like your DEX tokens, your stuff, your lending protocols, like some of these tokens, yes, they have utility, but it's just not as much utility as like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum where literally every transaction uses it and it's required for the protocol to work. So does utility mean a good investment? Um, for the most part, utility means that there is a reason for the, the token to be used. And when there's a reason for the token to be used, there's a reason for the token price to go up as more people want to use it. The problem is that like, Yes, all L1 tokens have good utility, right? Because they need to be used on the blockchain. But now you have to pick the appropriate L1 that is actually going to be used by people, right? So I personally think like Ergo is going to be used by people. I think Cardano is going to be used by people. We know Ethereum and Bitcoin are used by people. So these are tokens with high utility, but also high uses, okay? So the token can have all the utility in the world, but if it's not used by people, your the price isn't going to go up because nobody wants it and nobody is using it. An example of where utility is in everything is Uniswap back in 2021. Uniswap back in 2020, right? When you had the big DeFi summer going on. Uniswap, you know, the Uni token is a governance token of the protocol. But between you and me, right, I think we all kind of know that governance in crypto is not as fully fledged out as we would like, right? Like, we're not actually voting to change protocols yet on mass scale, right? Everyone doesn't have a digital ID where they're voting and this and that, right? It's just, we're not there yet. But a lot of tokens, specifically like Uniswap and MinSwap and all these DEXs and lending protocols, they say that, you know, part of our token is governance in the future and then possible revenue sharing and stuff like this. But back in 2020, 2021, these things were not fully fledged out for Uniswap. Yet Uniswap made more gains than Ethereum itself. If you would have held Uni from like 2019, 2020, 2021 and sold it all in 2021, you would have made a ridiculous amount of money. And the, the same thing is probably going to be true in like 2025, 2026 for like MinSwap holders, right? So, and like MuesliSwap, but like DEX token holders. But the thing about it is these DEX tokens don't have a whole lot of utility, right? Maybe you get lower transaction fees by a little bit or you get to vote on pro proposals in the future or you know they try and do a little bit of revenue sharing but i think you and i can agree that the utility of these tokens is not as high as the utility of like a bitcoin and a ethereum and a ada right another good example of what's been going on right now is like your pepes your snacks very reminiscent of dogecoin and shiba inu era and 
they just don't really have much utility. I know in the future, people might want to put utility around it, like what they do with SHIB and Dodge right now. So maybe in the future, Snack and Pepe will have a lot of utility or have things like games with them or something like that. But right now, those tokens are solely money-making machines. So where does the balance lie? Where should you have utility over profits and where should you have profits over utility? I think this comes down to a personal question. You kind of have to look in the mirror and look at your investment strategy and say, okay, what kind of investor do I want to be? If you're just 99% of us invest because we want to make money and that's why we're in crypto because we want to make money, but we also believe in like the future of what the crypto holds. So me personally, I do a lot of investing into protocols that I believe in that have decentralized focuses like Cardano and Ergo. I'm not opposed to going out and making money on like a snack or taking a trade here and there or, you know, like putting a little bit of money, some of my ADA into uh, MinSwap or into like an AA to finance or something like that. These protocols where the, the token doesn't do much. It's not not required for the protocol to be used, right? You don't need to hold Min to use MinSwap. You don't need to hold AADA to use AADA. You have to hold ADA to use the Cardano blockchain. So I'm not opposed to holding a little bit of my portfolio into these smaller tokens. But like, for instance, in the Ergo blockchain, Ergo is such a small crypto so far that I don't really feel the need to hold any of the DeFi tokens on Erg, on Ergo. Erg is already a risky enough investment. On Cardano, I'm a little bit more open-minded to holding some small DApp tokens like MinSwap because Cardano is a top 10 token. It has been for years. I have relative belief that in the future, it's still going to be up there and the utility of the ADA token is very high and going to be used. I think that because of that, things like MinSwap and AA to Finance and Muesli Swap and Sunday Swap and Wing Riders will flourish in 2024, 2025, 2026. So I'm not as scared of holding some of these tokens in the hopes that they do a Uniswap. They they do a Uniswap in 2024, 2025, 2026, where they just go parabolic. If you're going to hold tokens like this that are not like successful L1 tokens, like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum or an ADA, if you're going to hold something like a Uniswap, a Min, a Wing Rider token, something like that, right? You need to go into it realizing, what am I holding this for? Are you really holding it for voting on governance in 10 years when governance is in effect? I don't know. I'm probably not, right? My idea of holding these tokens is that I sell at the top of the next bull market because, which is going to be like 2025, 2026, something like that. Because if you look at Uniswap today, that chart went up, 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 and then it came all the way back down. Some people went into that Uniswap trade just because, you know, the crypto market was younger back then and we really didn't have that historical information. But people went into that Uniswap saying, oh man, 2021 is like, the greatest thing and I'm going to hold this uni forever but they should have just sold it all in 2021 because right now Uniswap the uni token is worth a quarter of as much as it was back then if I'm going into this bull market right now holding a min swap holding a milk holding some type of token that's not ADA that's not Ethereum not Bitcoin not ERG if I'm holding a dApp on one of these chains I'm 100% going to sell all of it at the top of the next bull market it doesn't even have to be the top it can be just like somewhere up there from where we are right now. But I will sell 100% of everything because those tokens are not worth holding all the way back down again. The thing you have to think about in this space is that technology is rapid, technology is fast, and there is a very high probability that if we go through a bull market and then through a bear market, something might come out better. That's better than Uniswap. That's better than MinSwap. That's better than Pancake Swap. right? I mean, like technology is only going to get better. So if you hold these things past the bull run and into, you know, the next bear season, that in my opinion is not the best move. So you just need to think about how much risk do I want to take on? How much money do I want to make? And how do I do that? And it's probably a scenario of balancing safe token utility and potential token utility with higher risk. You're holding some Cardano, some Bitcoin, some Ethereum, whatever you like. And then you're also holding a little bit of those very popular D apps. I'm not saying go out and pick the most random D apps on chain, but like if you're a Cardano holder and you hold some min, that's a relatively safe investment because min, min swap is the largest DEX on Cardano, right? I'm not saying go out and use the smallest DEX on Cardano to, to be the riskiest of risk. No, I'm saying hold the safe risk, which is Cardano, 
and then hold the safest of the DEXs, which is probably right now MinSwap, right? Or on Ethereum, it's Uniswap, right? So you got to balance some of these out. But if you only want to make money, you need to think about, okay, I can hold some Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's not going to run as much as some of these DApps. So how do I put myself in two positions where I'm comfortable with? Another thing to think about is also these tokens over here, these lower utility, higher risk tokens. What is my strategy for them? Why do I want to hold them? And what is my plan? Okay. My plan personally is what, and this is what I highly suggest to you is, yeah, you can hold these tokens, but get rid of them when you're in some profit in 2025. Okay. Don't hold on to them. Maybe hold on to like 10% of them. Right. But, but get rid of those things, take that profit, let them rise, let them fall, let them do whatever, because you don't want to get caught in a scenario where they promise like governance, they promise revenue sharing, and then it just hasn't happened in the next bull market. And then you go through the next bear market. And everyone's like, well, there's a new DEX that's come out, right? So you got to weigh out risk and reward with token utility. Token utility is not always the best way to make money, but token utility does secure your investments. Okay. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, no doubt in my mind, those things will be around for quite a while because people will always want to use them and they will always, always want to use the native currency and token. MinSwap, Uniswap, A to Finance, PancakeSwap, any day of the week, there could be a new token that comes out, a new DEX that's just infinitely better because of new technology. And those things will become obsolete and your token will be obsolete with it. All right. So that's just my two cents. You don't always need token utility to make money, but token utility and money need to be balanced out in a proper portfolio. I want everyone to make money. I want you to make money. I want myself to make money, but I don't want us to get caught in just making money, like just going all in on meme coins. I want us to be safe, guarantee that we're going to make some money, maybe not all the money, right? But some money and then some, you know, riskier high utility tokens if you want to. If you want to do that, this is my strategy for doing that. Token utility isn't always as important for making money, but know when to get out of these tokens without utility, all right? That's my video for today. I hope you found it interesting. Um, you know, it's just something to think about and it's just something to you got to think about if you want to invest in some of these things. All right. I hope everyone has a great week and a great weekend. See you in the next video.